Hi, everyone. I'm Cindy Edwards from PR Media Now. And with me to discuss today's news from Atlas Salt is Atlas President Roland Howe. Mr. Salt, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Cindy. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, there are some exciting drill results to talk about, along with general corporate developments for Atlas. So, Roland, drill results are in on hole CC9, which was a 250-meter step out from CC4 into the untested eastern part of Great Atlantic, a 336-meter gross interval of salt, including 305 meters of massive salt. This drill hole was not part of the recently released preliminary economic economic assessment. So there will no doubt be some implications for the upcoming feasibility study when this hole is factored into the equation. So how important is CC9, Roland? Cindy, you know, indeed, it's, it's quite an extraordinary drill hole by any standard, especially considering it was a significant step out to the east uh, where there'd be no previous drilling. It's truly a massive deposit and uh, there will be another uh, resource upgrade. Um, the drill hole features 305 meters of massive salt, like I said, very high grade material above 95%. And it started at a depth of just 240 meters. Very pure, beautiful salt, with some sections grading up to 97, 99%. Wow. And the shallowness of this deposit is one of the real special signatures, truly unique among deposits serving the road salt sector, and will enable Great Atlantic to become the only underground salt mine in North America access through inclined ramps versus vertical shafts. And that's why, as the PA demonstrates, this will be such a low cost producer. And as we said before, the low cost producer always wins. Now, Roland, can you put CC9 in the context of other leading underground salt deposits in North America, in particular, the Goddard mine that you managed for many years? Well, Godrich, as you know, is the biggest and the best uh, underground salt mine in the world. And there, there's never been a drill result at Godrich even remotely close to what we've just announced. They've been mining at roughly the 1,750 foot level at Godrich since the very beginning, and that's almost 65 years ago, from a salt seam that's about 80 feet thick. And they use three vertical shafts to access the seam. And they're currently many kilometers offshore and away from those shafts. So Great Atlantic has these great thicknesses starting at just under 200 meters depth in some places, while Goddard is mining at around 530 meters below surface. Great Atlantic is it's on track to become the first new salt mine in North America in 25 years, with all the advantages of its shallowness and new technology. So it does have the potential to become the biggest and the best in the sector. Now, earlier this month, Compass Minerals reported quarterly financials for the period ending December 31st, showing revenue up 12% year over year at $308 million U.S. Operating earnings were up 20% year over year to $47.1 million. Now, this was driven primarily from Goderich. The an amazing thing is that this mine has been producing for more than 60 years. What this shows, Cindy, is how prolific a salt mine can be at driving earnings as well as long-term low beta cash flow, even after being in operations, operation for decades. Uh, there's still a big demand for these kind of assets, especially today. Uh, and the risk profile is also much more attractive than you would see in a traditional metal mine, where there you'd have many more issues to contend with, along with a volatile underlying commodity price. Rock salt keeps gradually pushing higher. Year after year, essentially very consistent, very predictable. Now, Roland, what do you say to investors who have seen their Atlas Salt shares drop by nearly half since the release of the PEA for Great Atlantic at the end of January? Well, two major investors who really understand this sector and, and perform great due diligence, they did a $10 million private placement in salt in early January at $2 a share. Cindy, so that should comfort anyone, really. And I've enjoyed a great career in the salt business for more than 30 years. I've never seen a deposit like Great Atlantic. It's truly exceptional, and I predict it'll play a key role in shaping the North American road salt market for decades to come. It's such an advantaged asset with logistics and everything, it seems in its favor. Now, financial markets can be volatile, and we understand that, but the great value of Great Atlantic is an undersupplied domestic road salt market, and it's as strong as ever. And let's not forget the PEA is an independent and tested conservative valuation at over $900 million. 
Finally today, how's the search going for a new CEO and how might that move impact the company? Well, with the PEA out and the feasibility study next, and with discussions continuing with potential suitors as reported earlier, it's hats off to Patrick Larrisy for deciding now is the perfect time to bring in an individual with all the mind development and deal-making experience to bring this over the goal line for investors. We have an exciting game plan and we're going to make it happen. All right, Roland Howe, president of Atlas Salt. A pleasure to talk to you, sir. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.